Hello, everyone. I'm Tiffany Nielsen, and you're watching Industry Insights Webinars Interviews. And today I'll be interviewing Nika Chinchaladza. How are you, Nika? Hello, Tiffany. I'm doing great. So thanks for inviting me and hope you're doing great as well. I am. And Nika is the CEO and founder of the Mars Society of Georgia. And can you tell us a little bit about what got you interested to join the Mars Society? Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, when I was a kid back then, uh, I used to have this uh, uh, dusty old USSR telescope on my balcony. And my grandfather and I we would uh, frequently observe the moon on the clear night sky. And uh, that was uh, when the space uh, earned my affection, you can say it so. And uh, then I read a book, uh, and uh, it, it is a red book with a red planet on top of it. I have it here. The headline is The Case for Mars. It is a book by Dr. Robert Zubrin, the founder of the Mars Society. Uh, and uh, this book, uh, after I read it, I was uh, just mind blown and a, a cause worth fighting for, I thought, and uh, I've been fighting ever since. So then I joined the Mars Society and for two years I've been a member there uh, holding public lectures here in Georgia, spreading the vision. And then I met like-minded individuals, and that was when I decided to finally create this Georgian chapter. And can you share with us more about the public events that you hold to get people more interested in space? Uh, sure. So as the first and so far the only space advocacy organization in the country, Mars Society uh, Georgia aims to foster public interest in space and also help build a healthy ecosystem for the space companies to come. And in order to accomplish this, Mars Society Georgia holds uh, monthly webinars regarding uh, uh, topics related to space and Mars, of course. Uh, and we oftentimes have uh, renowned speakers from NASA, ESA, and so on. We also hold a series of events and uh, lectures at uh, local universities and high schools especially the physical mathematical high schools. Uh, and uh, we're also currently organizing Georgian Rover Challenge, which will be an annual event for the university students here in Georgia to build and compete their Mars rovers. And we also have bigger plans, which includes uh, the analog missions as well, so and so on. That sounds really interesting. And with these events, how do you measure the success of them? And are they scalable and repeatable for other Mars Society chapters? Well, for, for me, um, uh, attendance, the actual attendance on the events is not a decisive factor. What matters more to me is what happens after the events, like follow up, the building the community, growing the organization. How many uh, of the students that attend the event will actually choose to pursue their career in space and how many uh, space organizations and or startups will emerge in the country. Uh, these are some of the factors by which you can measure the success of the uh, activities of the organization. And it's a long-term measurement, of course. Uh, and uh, yes, other Mars Society chapters can implement those activities. And uh, uh, I believe some of them are already holding similar events. And what made your government close the space program in 2004? And did you manage to convince them to reopen it in 2020? Yes, yeah, so that's a good, good question. So you see, Georgia is a post-Soviet country and we uh, regained our independence in 1991. And it took us 13 years until we first created our space agency in 2004. Uh, but then two years later, unfortunately, uh, the space agency in 2006 was closed down due to uh, political reasons and an excuse of lack of interest from the people, uh, from the public. Uh, and um, then for years, this uh, subject, the space agency, was never again considered to reopen until recently, some one year ago, I uh, and my team, uh, began to speak out publicly about the importance of the space program and space agency uh, in the country and the benefits that this could offer. Uh, and now it is with a you know happy smile on my face, as you can see, that I uh, announced that my words were heard and the space agency is in the process of being recreated right now. And it can be um, 
established any time now. I think it's going to happen in November, though, this November. And to expand on that, do you think that it's important for all countries to have a vested interest in the new space economy? Well, well uh, definitely, because the global uh, space industry is estimated to generate the revenue of uh, around one trillion by uh, 2040. And uh, right now it is uh, uh, 350 billion United States dollars. Uh, so you can already see the increase, the statistical increase that uh, uh, in these numbers, and it's only going to continue to uh, increase exponentially. And uh, just the sheer fact that the uh, main asteroid belt, which is located between Mars and Jupiter, has uh, plenty of asteroids, which if uh, which consist of materials that, if imported to Earth, uh, would sell for forty thousand dollars per kilogram. Just this sheer fact is already uh, the proof that uh, space has enormous potential in terms of revenue, and that's just one of the aspects. And so definitely, yes, every country must have interest in, the, uh, in supporting the new space economy. And I believe uh, that sooner or later, uh, they will just have to. And what are your thoughts and experience on space policy? Yes, so space policy is definitely important. And, uh, but one policy that I am in complete disagreement with is the planetary protection policy. And uh, I find planetary protection policy uh, regarding to the red planet Mars completely opposed to the goal, which is to colonize Mars and sp spread life there. Uh, you, you see, uh, uh, plus we know that uh, the Earth and Mars are exchanging uh, uh, hundreds of kilograms of uh, rocks and surface materials annually. And we know this because scientists have examined the um, famous SNC meteorites, and they have uh, come to the conclusion that if there ever were living organisms on Mars, then they would have survived the trip and already have been there uh, on Earth and vice versa. Uh, so to give you uh, an example, this would be uh, the same as prohibiting to bring birds over from Canada to US. Uh, and this would be pointless because birds would be flying across the border all the time. Very interesting. And can you tell us about some of your favorite space startups? Yes. Yeah, so uh, I don't know about my favorite space startups, but my favorite space company is SpaceX. Uh, what SpaceX have done is they demonstrated that it is possible for a private entrepreneurial team to do things in space that uh, were previously thought that only governments of superpowers could do. And they did it in one, uh, at one-tenth the cost and in one-third the time. And they even went on to do things that uh, were previously thought to be impossible at all. And uh, by this, I mean the uh, creation of the reusable launch vehicles. We've been doing a lot of research on those, and that's a fantastic breakthrough, the reusable rockets. And what was it like to attend the European Rover Challenge in Poland? Well, it was great. So let me uh, speak about it for those who don't know. Uh, European Rover Challenge is the biggest annual uh, space and robotics event ha held in Poland. Uh, and it is the biggest uh, event in Europe. So it consists of three parts. Uh, and uh, the core of the event is the Rover Challenge, which is intended for the university students to build and compete their Mars rovers. And they do so on the artificial Mars track. Uh, the second part of the event is the educational part, which includes uh, um, lectures from the world, the renowned space leaders and scientists. And finally, the third part is the inspiration zone, um, which has uh, dozens of exhibitors from different space robotics companies uh, and also includes workshops for the younger audience. Uh, well, attending the event of such a scale for me was a great experience, especially because me and my team are currently organizing Georgian Rover Challenge here in Georgia. And if you had the chance to go to Mars, would you? Well, uh, without hesitation, uh, colonizing Mars uh, is the biggest challenge of the humankind. Uh, and, but it is not a venture for a far future generation. It is us who shall play our part in making humanity interplanetary species. 
Uh, and uh, as one of the leaders of the Mars Society, uh, I will not rest until my part in this crusade is finally complete. That's amazing. And if someone wanted more information on what you're doing and or to contact you, how would they do so? Oh, well, I, I would even encourage them to reach me via LinkedIn or email, and I'll be sending those over to you so that you can include those in the description. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Nika. And it was a pleasure talking to you today and best of luck with your future events. Thank you, Tiffany. Thanks again for having me. And I really appreciate what you and your company are doing and all those webinars. I'm attending all of them. So also good luck to you. Thank you, Nika. Hopefully you make it to Mars one day soon. <laughs> I hope so. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. To learn more about space law, check out our white paper. You can purchase it at the link below or at www.iotmktg.com.